What's going on YouTube? Chris here for Friendly Frenzy Games and in this video we're going to walk you through the tutorial and first mission for Steam's newest sci-fi survival crafting game called Pacific Drive. Let's ride! Once you create a new game, you're plopped right into the heart of the game's main storyline. So the first few minutes really kind of act as a driving simulator to help you get adjusted to the handling of the car and the tutorial is also going to teach you how to use the wipers and activate your headlights. From here, your radio is going to turn to static and you'll begin to experience the strange anomalies in which this game has built its story on. In this given area, the tears in the universe are highlighted in red areas. You'll notice the terrain morph or even completely disappear before you get magnetically pulled into an anomaly yourself. Once you get pulled through to the other side, you'll find yourself in the Olympic Exclusion Zone, which is the primary location of Pacific Drive. You'll start hearing some radio transmissions and receive quest instructions from Tobias and Francis, some of the game's main characters. After getting familiar with the basic game controls for player movement, you'll be introduced to some of the game's main systems, like maintaining your vehicle. For this, you're going to need to pick the wheel up off the ground from outside the shed and fasten it onto the wagon before hopping inside, firing up the engine and shifting it into drive. A little further down the road, you're going to end up running out of fuel near a wrecked vehicle. You're then going to be instructed to remove the fuel can from your trunk so that you can siphon some gas from the wrecked car in order to fuel your own vehicle. Ensuring you have enough fuel and fuel reserves is going to be imperative for your success as you progress through the game while discovering new locations and completing runs for valuable resources. After refueling, you'll be back on the road until you come across Opie's Auto Garage. Once inside the shop, you'll receive new main story quest instructions from Opie, another of the game's main characters and owner of the auto shop. The auto shop serves as your central hub and home base between runs. So you're going to be instructed to turn on the power and pick up your backpack. The backpack acts as your main point of personal storage when you're exploring on foot, and you're also going to get a quest objective to collect the mechanic's eye, which is essentially a headset that allows you to scan the objects in your environment that you're able to interact with. This is how you'll fill out your logbook entries and learn about what specific tools you'll need to navigate certain obstacles like lock mechanisms. The mechanic's eye is also very useful in diagnosing specific issues with your vehicle and can also let you know which type of repair kit that you're going to need to use on each of the vehicle parts. You'll then be shown the shop's first aid kit, in which you can use between runs to completely restore any of the health that you lost during your previous run. Now you're going to need to pull the car into the shop, but before you can do this, you're going to need to once again reattach that loose wheel. Between each run, at the back of the shop, there's going to be a new wrecked vehicle that you can salvage for parts for new materials. This is also where you're going to first learn about the most basic tools in the game to aid you in discovering the different areas that you're going to come across in the game. The pry bar is primarily used for breaking basic locks on doors or trunks, whereas the scrapper is your main tool for breaking down metal body panels and doors, as well as electronics that you'll find littered in searchable areas. You're also sometimes going to be able to use it to cut holes in chain like fences to ultimately gain access into areas that you wouldn't otherwise be able to explore. To get the scrapper for the very first time, you can visit the friendly dumpster at the back of the shop. Now this dumpster is going to replenish with a few items that the game thinks you might benefit from between each run, so be sure to check this one each time you return to the shop. Now the next objective is really to get you familiar with crafting and equipping body panels to your station wagon. This is obviously going to be crucial as you progress through the game as your chances of survival will go way up if your vehicle is outfitted correctly to shield you from the enemies and elements. You can visit the workbench inside the auto shop and create a crude panel then attach it to the vehicle. Next you can visit the storage locker to collect the repair putty. The repair putty is a basic healing item 
for the body parts of your car and oddly it repairs wheels and headlights as well. The vehicle part is completely healed once the entire health bar is a solid white. Otherwise, parts that have a white, yellow, or red hash marked health bar would definitely benefit from the healing effects of items like repair putty. As we mentioned before, the mechanic's eye will help you determine what item you need to use in certain situations. In the case of this flat tire, you're going to need to make and apply a sealing kit if you don't happen to have an extra wheel laying around as a direct replacement part. Now that your repairs have been made, you're going to need to prepare the car for your first mission. Now obviously, entering the Olympic exclusion zone demands a lot from your vehicle, and to ensure that you're able to make it back in one piece with a bunch of resources to ultimately drive your progression, you're going to need a few key pieces of equipment. You first find cardboard boxes at the back of the shop in which you can install in your trunk that's going to act as additional player storage for your runs. Now whenever your backpack gets full out there, offload your items into these boxes to maximize the efficiency of each one of your runs. Don't forget though, you can rotate the items to make better use of the space as well. It's really all about inventory management here. The only thing better than crafting at the auto shop is crafting on the fly. To do this, install the crafting mat from the back of the shop and into your trunk of the wagon as well. This is going to be particularly useful for when you need to craft new tools to allow you to continue harvesting materials when you're out on a run. Now lastly, you're going to need to install the arc device from the back of the shop and into your passenger seat. This is going to serve as your main navigation and will display the map as well as any and all points of interest and quest markers while you're out on a run. Before final preparations and starting into the first mission, the game is also going to show you what blueprints look like and how to use them to unlock new items for your crafting table. Pick up the gear and impact hammer blueprints at the front of the shop to add them to your craftable items list. To put the finishing touches on preparations for the first mission, the game is going to introduce you to the auto shop's own in-house fuel pump. Here, you can ensure that your car will have enough fuel before embarking on your journey, but make sure not to forget to top up your fuel can in the trunk for some additional peace of mind. Lastly, you'll need to flick the switch to the charging station to make sure that your car and its electrical systems are fully charged before heading out. Now, you can move over to the projector and set your sights on the location of the game's this first mission. So just a heads up here though, you will need to hop back into your car and drive it out of the shop, just into the direction of the map marker before the game teleports you to the proper location. Now by the time you reach the radio station map, you should have a pretty good idea of the game basics. Now it's really just time to put them into practice. A quick tip here that we've done actually quite often, we'll always seem to park the car when we're hopping out to explore. This is obviously going to keep it from rolling away on you, but also we turn off the engine while we're exploring on foot, just so that we don't consume fuel unnecessarily. You're going to want to be sure that you're very thorough when exploring these different points of interest along the map. There's often many crates, lockers, and storage containers to open, and you also want to be sure to salvage the materials found on the wrecked cars, just to ensure that you've got enough materials to remake your tools, put some lofty upgrades into your auto shop, and ultimately craft the impact hammer. Now in this mission, you are going to be collecting plasma, but to do so, you need to create that impact hammer. This is going to allow you to break the glass casings to collect it. You'll need to make sure that when you're collecting the plasma that you don't park your car too close to these towers as they will do considerable damage to all of your vehicle's panels. Also though, be sure that you're not struck by the lightning bolts shooting down in front of the plasma canisters when you're out collecting as this is going to hurt you quite a bit as well. You're also very likely to see these floating alien type creatures with a green spotlight underneath. These guys are called abductors. Try your best to keep away from them, as when their spotlight turns red and they spot you, they've got quite a heavy magnet that'll pull you into obstructions across the map that causes quite a bit of damage to your vehicle as well. Now, that being said, the damage is far less than the plasma towers, but it is still something to be mindful of. After you collect 5 plasma, you're going to get an objective to reach the radio tower at the top of the hill. Now, you will find this marked on your arc device in the passenger seat, 
Once you reach the radio tower, you can collect the broadcast transmitter from its base and you'll receive new instructions to collect what's called stable anchors. This is a stable energy source that used in conjunction with the arc device is going to allow you to create a gateway in the map and return back to the auto shop, really completing your mission. Now we would definitely highly recommend collecting all four of the stable anchors from this map as these anchors seem to be the primary way to drive your game's progression and higher quality upgrades to your equipment. But we should mention though that they are able to revisit these maps and only one stable anchor is required to link the gateway to escape in this first mission. After you reach the linked gateway location, drive into the center of the orange beam of light to be instantly teleported back to the auto shop. Congratulations, you've completed your first run and first mission in Pacific Drive. Now it's time to see what all of those collected resources can do for you. So as you can see here, to progress further in the game, you're going to need more map nodes. But to do this, you need to craft the scanning antenna from the fabricator and then build it on the roof of the shop. However, if you collected all of the stable anchors in the first map, your fun doesn't have to stop there. You can head back to the fabricator to research a bunch of new recipes for new auto shop machinery or higher tier crafting materials that lets you build more useful vehicle panels and this will ultimately permanently help your survival as you progress further in this game. Now we personally chose to build a matter deconstructor to more quickly and easily salvage parts from constructed items, but we also chose to build an outfitting station so that we could begin upgrading our personal gear. For starters, we really, really wanted a bigger backpack for increased storage. Lastly, we chose to unlock a few of the higher tier crafting materials, specifically steel sheets so that we could swap out the crude panels on our station wagon and make them all steel.